So I just got done watching A24's latest, Men. Did I like it? No. Did I find it interesting? That would be putting it lightly. This film has been getting a lot of attention lately. Not only because it's a new A24 film, but because the movie is filled with so much pulpy imagery, particularly in its religious symbolism. What I want to focus on in this video is a piece of imagery that I haven't really seen analyzed, that being the fact that the cottage in Men is clearly an allegory for a vagina, <laughs> with the men portrayed by Rory Kinnear being metaphors for penises. L let me explain. For context, this film explores a woman taking a vacation in a cottage to heal after the traumatic experience of watching the husband she was going to divorce graphically die, but while on vacation, many men with the same face harass her. In the beginning of the film, we are greeted with the first of the men that will haunt Harper, Jeffrey. Jeffrey seems to be a pleasant enough fellow, if a little weird, giving Harper a tour of the cottage she will be staying in. But then Harper reveals that she has eaten what Jeffrey describes as the forbidden fruit. This being a clear reference to the story of Adam and Eve in the Bible, where Eve, the first woman, eats the forbidden fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. After Eve does this, she becomes aware of sin, shame, and all the abstract emotions that animals don't feel such as discomfort at the sight of another's nakedness. As a result, Eve and Adam are expelled from the Garden of Eden by God. When Harper reveals that she ate this fruit, Jeffrey says that she was allowed to eat, but his face betrays this. He is visibly upset. Yeah. Apple from the garden? Y yeah, it was delicious. No, 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 mustn't do that. Forbidden fruit. Oh, God, sorry, I, I, I I'm joking. I oh. I think this represents the knowledge of good and evil being put upon both of these characters. As Jeffrey represents a penis, both Harper and the audience are made uncomfortable by his presence, just as Adam and Eve are made uncomfortable by the sight of each other's genitals. Jeffrey, being revealed to be a lustful penis, I'm sorry, is made uncomfortable by Harper's presence. This interaction plants the seed of conflict for the rest of the movie. Later, Harper goes out and explores the surrounding area of the cottage. It is on this adventure that she explores the green countryside, with grass growing untamed everywhere. She then stumbles upon a dark and long tunnel, which is also symbolic of a vagina. On this journey, we get our first glimpse at the green man, who chases her back to her cottage and is the first of the men who tries to get into the house through the front door. As you can see, the walls of much of the house, particularly at the front door, are very bright red, almost blood-colored, which hints at the interior of the house being the inside of a woman. In terms of the green man, in other religions, this figure is a symbol of fertility and progeny, and is a deity of sorts. The same way the green man chases Harper out of the green wilderness is reminiscent of God banishing Eve from the Garden of Eden. However, this depiction of the green man is notably bald and naked, drawing clear parallels to being a penis. God damn it. As the movie draws to its climax, the rest of the men in the film try to get into the house. Here, Harper is now wearing a pink dress that is oddly reminiscent of a maid's outfit, with pink traditionally representing girls and girlhood, and the expression maidenhead referring to a woman's virginity. The goal of these men, the penises, is to get into the house, which is a pussy. And furthermore, to Harper, who is now the representation of virginity, which men traditionally crave. The priest character even states as much, with him wondering how many men she has been with as he makes his advances on her. In the film's ending, Harper almost submits to the men letting them into her house as they continuously and grotesquely give birth to each other. The men giving birth to each other as they go inside the house is clearly a representation of a penis coming. I'm sorry. The men giving birth to each other as they go inside the house is clearly a representation of a penis coming, as the act of creating more children in progeny is the ultimate goal here. The men acting with such violence and disregard for Harper shows how temptation and the deadly sin of lust corrupts a man. In the end, they only perpetuate their own pain, inflicting it on others as well as their offspring, highlighting how lust is a deadly sin. 
Also, take note that this scene serves as the climax of the film. A climax being another term for coming. Holy shit, that's clever. But it is here when Harper is able to sit down with the men, who have morphed into the form of her dead husband. This is where she finally finds closure. But why is all this imagery here? Well, the theme of the movie and the goal of Harper is moving on from a previous loved one. Harper needs to move on from her dead husband, and part of moving on is finding someone new to love, which is scary. Moving on is scary, and that is shown clearly in the fear and dread she has throughout the film. Another feeling true to life in moving on, especially when it comes from a dead spouse, is guilt. This guilt is clearly shown in the fact that as she attacks the men breaking into the cottage, she gives them the same wounds of her dead husband, a broken ankle and a split arm respectively. The film ends with Harper laughing hysterically and joyously, seeing her friend pregnant. What Harper is really reacting to is the fact that she can now see the future after her previous relationship, with the pregnancy representing the future. But her reaction being somewhat uncomfortable shows that she is moving on without forgetting the past, without completely rejecting her last relationship. To summarize, I think Men is a movie about a woman finding a new sexual partner after the end of an intense romantic relationship.